This video is going to focus on using the Kitchener stitch to graft close the toe of a sock. The Kitchener stitch is a great way to close the toe so that the stitches remain seamless looking, but also does not put a seam on the inside of your sock that will rub on your toes. So I've got a sock here that I have finished all of the toe shaping and I've left the stitches on the two needles and I've cut a tail that's approximately 16 inches long. Many patterns will say 12 inches and I would say based on my experience 12 inches is the very shortest that you would want to have your tail left so that when you're done seaming your stitches you still have a nice comfortable end to weave in. So for the purposes of this video, um, we're, we're assuming you've worked in Magic Loop, but if you've worked on DPNs or two circulars, um, that's fine too. What we really want to make sure is that you've got half the total number of stitches on what we would call the front needle, so the needle closest to us, and then half the remaining number of stitches on the back needle. Our tail is going to be attached to the last stitch on the back needle. So in the notes below, I've got written instructions on how to complete the Kitchener stitch. And I'm gonna go through and show you how I like to remember what step I'm on. So um, it's maybe silly nomenclature, but it's what's always helped me. I think of front needle, back needle. So then I think of front door. So the stitches on the front needle, we have to go through the front door to take them off. And the stitches on the back needle, we have to go through the back door to take them off. Maybe sounds silly, but it works for me. So each stitch is going to get processed twice. The first step is going to be um, simply, I don't know, like priming an engine. You're priming your steps or your stitches. So I'm going to, um, I try to get my needles so that they're about the same depth sticking out from the stitches. And we're gonna make sure that our working yarn is always below our needles. We wanna make sure that it doesn't come over top. We'll end up creating an extra yarn over in there and we don't wanna do that. So I've threaded my working yarn onto my tapestry needle and to prime the first stitch, I'm going to insert my tapestry needle into the stitch purlwise, pull it through, and I'm going to leave that stitch on that front needle. I'm now going to insert my tapestry needle into the front or knitwise into that first stitch on the back needle and pull it through. See how my working yarn is trying to go over that needle? We want to make sure it's underneath. So I always give, give it a bit of a tug down. That stitch on the very end on the back needle is our last stitch worked. So it will grow um, as we work these first two stitches. So that's step one and step two. We're now gonna go to step three, which says to insert your needle knitwise, or as I like to think, into the front door of the front stitch. And we're gonna remove that stitch from the front needle. Now we have to go in purlwise into the next stitch on the front needle and leave it on. Step four, says to go in purlwise, so through the back door, into that first stitch on the back needle and take it off. And then knitwise, or in the front door, onto that next stitch on the back needle and leave it on. So you're hearing me say front door and back door, and that's how I remember if I need to take the stitch on or, or take the stitch off the needle or leave it on. If we're on the front needle, and we go in through the front door, they match, so it comes off. If we're on the front needle and we go through the back door, or purlwise, through the back of the stitch, it stays on. Likewise with the back needle, if I go through the back door, or purlwise, the stitch comes off. And if we're on the back needle and we go in through the front door, or knitwise, it stays on. I know that's a silly, <laughs> a silly trick, but it works for me. So I'm just gonna go over a couple more stitches with you and then I'm gonna work to the end and show you how to finish the toe. 
So step three, as per the written instructions, we go in knitwise or through the front door on that first stitch and take it off. Go through the back door or purlwise on that front needle and leave it on. Go through the back door on that back needle and off. Front door, back needle and on. Step three again, we go in knitwise and off on the front needle, purlwise and leave it on. Through the back door on the back needle, this is for step four, take it off. Through the front door on the back needle and leave it on. So there is quite a rhythm to this and you can see already that we're starting to close up those first few stitches. Um, I'm going to work to the last two stitches here and come back because it's going to change our rhythm a little bit. Um, I do recommend the first time you do this that you turn off the TV and uh, close the door if you can so you can keep your rhythm going. Um, but I'm going to work to the end and then I'll come back and show you how to finish those last few stitches and how to deal with a tension issue on the last stitch. Okay, so I am back down to my last two stitches on each needle. Um, my final steps are going to be to take off the front stitch through the front door or going in knitwise just as we had done previously. And priming that next stitch by going in through the back door and leaving it on and I'm just going to caution you things get pretty slippery at this point especially if you're working on uh, metal needles so just make sure you hold on to those needles carefully so they don't slide out we're going to take the back stitch off going through the back door and removing as we had done all the way through the previous stitches on the sock and then we're going to go through the front door knitwise on the back needle and leave it on. So as you can surmise, there's no uh, stitches past these remaining two. So we're going to simply take this first stitch off knitwise and we're going to let that needle drop. And there's no next stitch to prime. So our next step is to simply take that final stitch off purlwise and drop this needle. <clears throat> So now we're left with a tail and this kind of loosey goosey, I don't know, like I think of it as like a little pook out. <laughs> it's, it's always happens. So what I'm going to do is actually stick my hand up inside the sock. <clears throat> and you'll see you've got these two bars. Those are the two stitches that we just took off. So I'm going to come over the top and insert my needle through them, which kind of puts a little lasso around the two stitches. And then if you sort of pull them out of the way, you'll notice that there's a bit of a hole there. I'm going to stick my needle into that hole. Oh, get the tension right. <clears throat> into that hole and pull my yarn through on the needle. What that does is allows me to capture those stitches, pull them down inside and secure them. So now you've got a nice clean tip on either end of the toe of your sock. And then when you weave your tail in on the inside of your sock, it's just going to secure that that little pook that we just it pulled into, into the inside of the sock is not going to poke out again on you when you lock your socks. So there you go. That's how you graft close the toe of a sock. As I say, the first time you do it, close the door and turn off any sounds so that you can concentrate. But there you go. Happy knitting!